the Lord as to what to say to his people. And the Lord put a scripture in my spirit for four days. I kept trying to get rid of it. Kept trying to think of something else. And First Lady West, this scripture kept coming to my mind. And I said, well, Lord, that ain't the theme of the Sabbath. And the Lord said, don't tell me it ain't the theme. Who are you to question me? Well, y'all sitting there like I already go to sleep. But if you go to sleep, I'm going to preach till you wake up. And the Lord began to speak to me. He said, I want you to deal with this scripture. I said, Lord, it ain't the theme. And I said, well, Lord, whatever your will is, let your will be done. Now, I'm going to say this. I may not deal with it as literally as I could. But hopefully, I'll be able to come back. Okay. If not, I'll deal with it in my chest. All right. All right. And this was the theme we just got through with our 148th church anniversary. Amen. 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 We started in May of 1876. Amen. 2024 is 148 years. And believe it or not, this was the theme of our church anniversary. And it just kept coming to me. And that is found in the book of Jude. The book of Jude. Those of you that are Bible students, it's a very familiar scripture. If you read the Bible anytime, mm -hmm. you've ran across Jude. Right. And what I like about Jude is it's only one chapter. That's it. Y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah. It's only one chapter. Those of you that don't like to read the Bible, I, you know, I never could understand it, Dr. West, how people can stay on their phone for five hours and never lift their head up, disengage in conversation, only to be glued to their phone. But yet, when it comes time to read the Word of God, the Bible got so much dust on it, it ain't been read in days. But that phone is hot. And people will almost get ran over by cars. Because they're not watching the traffic. But they got their head in that phone. And I wonder, Ella Quarterman, how did we ever make it before cell phones? You ever wonder that? How did we get along before, amen, texting and the web and tablets. How did we make it? But some way we made it. Because that wasn't even in our minds. We used to actually sit in the doctor's office and talk to one another. But now when you go in the doctor's office, everybody got a phone, head buried in the phone, looking like you better not send them to me. I'm waiting on them to call my name. And because of that, the phones have caused us to become dehumanized. Well, y'all ain't talking to me. We don't conversate no more. Because we do all our conversating on the phone. And some of y'all love texting. You know why you love texting? Because you ain't got to look at the person. You can tell them a piece of your mind and never look at them. And then if they text back, all you got to do is it, delete. <laughs> now when you arguing face to face you got to stand there and listen to what they're saying yes. but on that text phone you ain't got to never see their face and all you got to do is delete and not even listen to your message it's good in one way but it's bad in another way because it's taken away from uh, us being human and interacting with one another Jude the third verse this is what the Lord put in my spirit. Beloved, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was need for me, for me to write unto you and to exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. 
Amen. Amen. Church, fight for the faith. Amen. Will you tell your neighbor? Say, neighbor. neighbor. Church, church, fight, fight for, the faith. for the faith. Amen. Amen. Fight for the faith. I got one Holy Ghost minute. Amen. That plate calling me. Fight for the faith. What faith is that, Pastor? The faith that was once delivered unto the saints. The Bible said one baptism, one faith, one Lord. Is that right? And church, I'm speaking not only to the local church, but Dr. West, I'm also speaking to the universal church. For when Jesus asked Peter, who do men say that I am? Y'all help me mash these potatoes. I'll put some gravy on it. Who do Jesus, or who do men say that I am? And some say you are Elias. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're this. Some say you're that. And after he asked them, who do men say I am? He made it person, personal. He said, who do you say that I am? And Peter stood up and said, thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. Jesus looked at Peter and said, flesh and blood have not revealed that unto you. Don't you stick your chest out, Peter. And act like you've done something great. That came through divine revelation. It didn't come from your little puny mind, Peter. But my father revealed that unto you. And upon your confession of who I am, I will build Oh, come on, I got some Bible students here. And the gates of hell. Now, I want you to notice I said that to say him. When he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church, he wasn't so much talking about the local church, he was talking about the universal church. Because many local churches are failing. Look at the pandemic. Look at 9 11. A lot of strong churches. They used to be strong. Doors are closed. And it's as if they never existed. But the devil cannot stop the universal church, which is the body of Christ. See, so y'all worried about getting in the local church. I'd rather be in the universal church than to be in a local church. When you're in the local church, you get a preach in your hand and guard your heart. You put your name on the roll and you become a member. But when you're in the universal church, you are not a member. You are a disciple. You join the local. You're born in the universe. Amen. Amen. Oh, sit down. You're making me nervous. Amen. Preach. On this one. Preach. I got 24 to go seconds. All right, now. Let me explain that God time ain't like yours. That's right. So 20 more to go seconds may be up to an hour. Uh-huh. I heard somebody say, I hope not. Uh-huh. See, I said it so y'all can get him to say, he lied and said 20 more minutes. That's why I said, Holy Ghost time. We got to fight the good fight of faith. Like never before. Look at the world. I bring it even closer to home. Look at America. We are becoming a godless nation. Amen. We are becoming unethical, unmoral. We are calling wrong right. Or it's going to be no amen. And right, wrong. We don't just have a black and white area. Now we got a gray area. Ooh, I wish y'all could see the way some of y'all look at it. Jesus. But I'm going to preach it now. Preach. Miracle was founded upon God. But now we're getting away from God. We don't want God in the school. We don't want God in the courtroom. We don't want God on the money. We don't want God nowhere. I never could understand how everybody got rights but the Christians. The dog got right. They put you in jail for killing the dog. Trees got right. You go and cut down the wrong tree. They'll put you in jail. Everybody got right but the people of God. You can't go out on the street corner with a Bible and 
and start preaching, somebody gonna call the police. You got a permit for that? Years ago, I grew up. I grew up. I grew up in the Holiness Church years ago. But every Saturday, rain or shine, somebody's preacher was out there with a bullhorn and a Bible, asking people, "Do you know Jesus?" You try that now. They shut you down before you get started. If Reverend West want to put a tent out there, he got to go through a million permits on your own land. But then they can have a party and get drunk. Y'all don't like me. And smoke dope. That weed, that stinking weed, Lord, stinks to me. Got so bad until the next car next to you, you can smell it. I ain't coming hey, back here. Y'all ain't gonna invite me back no more. Tell somebody it's still the truth. They'll yeah, come up in the church smelling like it. Yeah, they will. The first lady, they send their children to school smelling like it. Sitting up in the DMV, I got two Holy Ghost seconds. Sitting up in the DMV, I work for Dan Baden. And I work on this is packed. And I've gone up in there many Mondays, and when you open the door, the weed hits you so hard. And I said to myself, ain't they scared that the state troopers are right in the back? But they don't care. Well, let me get to my message. Me, I'm saying all that to say that if there ever was a time the church needs to fight for the faith, it is today. You got the whole this evening. You don't go along with everybody because everybody going along with it. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. They told me years ago that there was a standard in the church. There was a way you had to live. They even had a way you had to dress. I come up in the old hole in this church. Everything was a sin. Drinking root beer was a sin. Drinking coffee was a sin. Going to the movies was a sin. Why was root beer a sin? Root beer was a sin because they said if you put your hand on the can, it'll cover the root and it just say beer. Y'all laughing, but it kept us holy. It made us respect the church. Yes. <laughs> Who in here came up in holiness? Who's here? You wouldn't walk up in here with no toes out, heels out, bust out, wearing the bust, wearing the blouse on, short to make a thing of speed time. You didn't come up in. If you did, the mother would get that big old sheet. Say, come here, baby. Come here, baby. And she do it with so much love, you couldn't get mad. She said, come here, baby. And she lay that thing right over you and sit right next to you. But now we got the mothers coming in the church. Walking like they throwing something. Got splits all up everywhere. Y'all ain't talking to me. Listen, the Lord is the church so until we have lost our identity. We don't know who we are. Because we want to be like the world. Come on, sit down. Well, you see, we, we do that so we can we can gain. Listen, if you got to do what the world do to gain people, you have lost them already. But when I grew up in the church, you knew church folk from ain't. You knew saints from ain't. And it wasn't because they wore them long white ankle dresses. It wasn't because they had Vaseline on their face. It wasn't because the women wouldn't wear no wigs or put no process in their head. It was the way they carried themselves. You You knew that's a sanctified person. You knew that's a sanctified person right there. They were 
wasn't walking around speaking. I got to go. They wasn't walking around speaking in tongues. They wasn't carrying no big pulpit Bible. Speaking in tongues. See my tie. See my tie. He come from Ohio. He come from Ohio. Oh my goodness. You know, making them tongues up. He the Messiah. He coming on the hot now. Suzuki. Boy, you got the Holy Ghost. He got the Holy Ghost. You be down there tearing for the Holy Ghost. One mother be in one ear, one mother be in the other ear. Mother over here said, turn it loose. Mother over here said, hold on. You didn't know what to do. Hold on or turn it loose. Jesus, Jesus. I'm getting ready to say, Jesus, Jesus. And when you thought you had the Holy Ghost and you were speaking in tongues and you really thought you had something, Mama said, get back down there. You ain't got nothing. Who <laughs> remember them days?